I had been single for a while, and I was sick and tired of it. Being a, being a 32 single adult is no laughing matter. The traumatic experiences of watching your friends get married, have children, and attain the American dream is akin to the hopeless depression and schizophrenic past of a mental patient. I wanted a wife, I wanted kids, and I wanted a steady job. I was tired of working at Burger King, and I was tired of living alone in a studio apartment. And I was almost certain I memorized about 90% of the porn stars on the internet by name. Disgusted by the company of my left hand, I decided to go on one of those speed dating websites. You know, the ones where all the crazy stories happen. I picked out my best garb and walked out the door. Keep in mind, I worked at Burger King. The best clothes I could afford were some mediocre dress shirts, a tattered khaki pants I bought at a Walmart <laughs> clearance event, and yeah. I walked into the event, uh, trying to display my best shred of confidence I had left. I was instantly discouraged when I saw all the other competing males in their anami suits and high-class whiskey in hand. And the auras of, and the auras of reeking of nothing but pure self-esteem and conceit. The ladies were dressed in fine, lovely dresses. Some of them quite low-cut and smelled like a flower garden designed by Martha Martha Stewart herself. There were some serious lookers out there. I swear my pants shrunk a couple sizes at the sight of some of those dresses. But you know. The speedy dating start. The first girl that I sat down with was quite young, a 22-year-old uh, mother of three. She had made a lot of mistakes in her life, and she seemed far more than I could handle. Right off the bat, she told me about how she was four days from a methamphetamine overdose or something, and was looking down to settle down with a nice man who didn't look like a walrus. I spent the next four minutes making general small talk, quite literally fearing for my life. Once that buzzer sounded, I rocketed from the chair at, a, at the speed of a gazelle. The young woman looked uh, offended. Honestly, what did she expect, right? Next woman. Way too old for me. I had thought that these events were age-regulated and had different meetings for different people st in different stages of life. I'm no pervert, but the whole idea of taking her shirt off and seeing two runny eggs nailed to a wall did not appease me one bit. My decision was finalized as soon as she brought up her grandchildren. Ugh. I can hardly handle this generation of young ones, much less two. I actually asked her if she needed help getting out of her chair after the buzzer sounded. Again, another dark look. I was batting zero for two, <laughs> but such pitches were ones that I would gladly let a catcher have. <sighs> the next woman seemed much more appealing. She was 26, studying to be a nurse at a local hospital. She loved kids, but had none of her own, which was a relief to me. She seemed to be quite stable, and wasn't a bad looker either, no lie, my eyes didn't did wander a bit south a couple times during the meeting. She didn't notice nor care, <laughs> as she never pointed it out. I asked her if she would like my number after the session ended, and she consented. I flipped open my phone and entered her number and read it out, smiling to her and thanking her for listening. No wonder why I've been single for so long. I got up and to the next table while doing so, I closed my phone on accident. I realized I didn't save her number, so she was lost forever. The love of, love of zero for free. The next table is empty. No joke. I wanted to sit and stare at the wall. I would have stayed home if nothing really to say here, but moving on. This is where the story begins to get dark. The woman I met at the next table was the most interesting of all. Not bad in any way. She had long, flowing dark hair and green, beautiful eyes. She had this cute smile, and man, what a tight body on this one. Black dress, black shoes, black everything. For someone dressed in such gothic manner, she had a bubbly personality. 
everything I said made her giggle, and I felt like the king just talking to this girl. <clears throat> she was 27 and currently unemployed. She was married to a husband before she had left her for, you know, their two children, and before their two children died of leukemia. She told me that cancer was entwined with her lineage, dating back, dating as back as far as the 18th century. Therefore, in numerous fits of emotional rage, her ex-husband blamed her for having given the children cancer and left. Uh, too pained by her loss of her entire family, she moved to a new city uh, just a few weeks ago and was living on living on unemployment um, social security checks, unable to continue working her job due to crippling depression and panic. She suffered as a result of her abandonment. Despite the torment of her life, she never seemed depressed about it. Either she was cre incredibly optimistic about her life, or she was one of those best actors I've ever seen. Either way, I was willing to take a shot. I asked her if she would like my number. I, it turned out that she had some bad meetings at a particular convention herself and wanted to take off to do something more fun. She tossed me an invite seeing as I was a lonely 32 year old man, she didn't have to ask twice. I never understood what she saw in me over these other guys. I was beaten, broken, no aspirations to better my current situation. Maybe she understood how I felt, considering she had been in pain herself, and decided to get to know me under this cocoon of emotionless insecurity. I sensed a thread of compassion intertwined between all that stress and trauma, willing to lend her an ear to lend, willing to lend an ear to anyone that felt the same pain as her. I was truly transfixed by her presence and drawn to the character. I had never felt like this before. We decided to go to a pool hall. Apparently, she used to be a regular at the pool hall at her old house and winning local tournaments, making a name for herself. And she wanted to check out the scenery here. I wasn't, she wasn't too shabby at the table and neither was I. So, I was excited. Every shot she made was perfect. The balls just sank into the pockets. Each pocket was a black hole waiting for something to transpass, <coughs> transpass into its field. Out of the 17 games we played, I think around 23 shots, she just kept on running the table. It was funny because she kept apologizing for being so good. I weighed the apology and complimented her on her skill causing her to giggle more. Each time she laughed harder and harder and harder. And to be honest, I was always excited when the cue ball landed on my side of the table. You know, to do some shots of myself. We left after that. She, well, she said she had to get home and had some errands to run. Being new to the neighborhood and all, I agreed. Since I had a Facebook application, I had to update, obviously. I didn't give her reason. Jesus. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with me passing up an amazing girl on Facebook? Eh, you know. So, we exchanged numbers and parted ways. I couldn't believe I had actually scored with a beautiful woman. Hell yeah! <laughs> Weeks and months passed on. We continued to talk and eventually we've been regularly dating. The relationship moved pretty quickly and it seemed we were truly a match for each other. After about seven months of dating, I asked her to marry me. I popped the question in on the 17th, as that's how many games we played on our first date. She found that so romantic and flew into my arms screaming yes to the skies. Things were finally looking up. I moved out of my shitbox of apartment and into her home. I always admired the cozy feel of her bedroom ranch house, something perfect to start a family in. As I was moving my final things in, I noticed so much of a mess I was at marketing or making my boxes with my stuff. I apologized and motioned to, well, motioned to the basement as I finished moving my things. Her face immediately darted to mind in a hurried, almost frantic voice. She assured me that she would take care of the rest of the things and that I should relax. It was a bit odd, but sure. But she had been through so much 
exagger <laughs> excruciating sadness throughout her life. Having psychiatric illnesses is, is something I expected. I complied to her request. The next few months were great. We never got tired of each other. And on our wedding day, the kiss we shared at that altar was just so special. I firmly believe the angel surrounded us and ser serenaded us with harps and trumpets as our lips sparked so brightly that the entire room was illuminated. I leave out the details of the honeymoon. <laughs> it's not a pornographic piece after all. She was always leery of me approaching the unforbidden basement though. Sometimes to the point of arguing with me about it, but aside from that I didn't see any fault in her. Until everything I knew about her was shattered. One day she told me she was going to the grocery store. I noted that I wanted some ground beef in order to keep making hamburger for dinner. But, you know, she smiled at me with that cute, adorable smile I'd grown to love, and she had it out. After climbing the Burger King corporate ladder, I finally attained a position of regional financial manager for the entire state. I was working on some budget information, assetting, and all the costs for all of all the um, franchises across the state. It was a long, endorsed process, but I was getting just above six figures for it, so I wasn't complaining. After each report was fully completed and evaluated, I moved the files to a USB so I could upload them to a computer for a corporate meeting the next day. To my horror, there were only three ports to le le there were only three reports left to finish. The computer crash, and if I didn't finish these reports, I'd surely use my I would surely lose my job. <sighs> I, I called my wife, asking her if she had another computer or something I could use, but she didn't answer. I rummaged through the house, searching for something to finish these reports to no avail. Desperate times called for desperate measures, so I took the daring risk of approaching the basement. The handle was unusually cold and the door was locked. Frustrated and defeated, I, stum I slumped on the couch in depression. That's it! Until I realized there was a specific flower pot my wife guarded with her life. On a hunch, I went to it and found the key under the dirt. As soon as I opened the door, a rancid tangle odor <laughs> attacked me, falling from the wall of a decrepit building. The entire basement was locked as if wasting away, a unclear contrast to the rest of the house. The heavy layers of dust upon every surface suggested that the basement hadn't been accessed in years. Using my cell phone as a flashlight, I guided myself down the stairs and flicked the light switch. Surprisingly, the bulb still worked. The walls looked molded, the wood breaking down, the stench was putrid and the entire place was in disarray. I encountered, I encountered a strong sense of dysphyre opia uh, a, after setting foot in the room, so I quickly searched for some old computer with the intent of running upstairs as quickly as possible. To my look and astonishment, there was an old laptop and charger in the corner, hidden under some boxes, books, and oddly enough, one of the boxes that she and which brought down after I moved. I had not seen this stuff in a long time. Ignoring the nostalgia, I seized the computer and charger and raced up the mat to the master bedroom. After giving the laptop a few minutes of power, and I booted it up. It ran on XP, and was quite the technological dinosaur compared to the modern equipment of Microsoft Office that was acceptable. As soon as the windows finished booting up, a system managed to appear on the screen, notifying me a few sources have been added to the target video cache, and I liked it and asked if I'd like to check on it. I had never seen a system message like this before. I knew that snooping was generally taboo, but curiosity overcame me. I was taken to a hidden file that 
was requiring a password to access it. Rolling my eyes, I moved the cursor to the X out of the to X out of the program. But then suddenly something typed the password in for me. A bit frightened at this point, I was sucked into the screen. There were four videos entitled Him dot avi one dot avi and two dot avi and y dot avi all born thumbnails were black curious and stupidly i clicked on the one entitled him i should have never done that the video was extremely shaky and grainy i could barely make out the figure of the man tied to the chair with some sort of metallic rope a woman moving as if she was floating on air, not moving a single bone in her body, but still yet able to slowly hover around the room, came into picture. To my horror, she brought out a knife and started slowly cutting the man. The man screamed in bu brutal pain as the woman slowly cut him into pieces. Blood poured out of his mouth and all of his lacerations. The woman dug the knife in deeper and deeper. His clothes was getting slowly stripped from his body, and after each article was removed, she used a lighter of <laughs> she used a lighter and set all of his newly exposed hairs on fire, covering in him in horrific burns and terrifying cuts. The man had stopped screaming and was now simply brawling. <laughs> Oh my, this made me sick to my stomach. He occasionally screamed out, Why? <laughs> for, for that's all I could muster. Each time he did, the woman stabbed him again. She began laughing as the, began, as the man began vomiting blood and entrails. She picked up, up a small solid piece of the vomit with the knife and slowly licked it clean. <laughs> Giggling like a schoolgirl. She then proceeded to gouge the man's left eye out while he was still alive. I, I couldn't watch anymore and closed the video. Shaken and horrified, I clicked on 1.avi. I had to know what was going on. This time, it was a young boy, about 8 years old, bound to a chair. He, he looked confused and innocent, and I shook my head and fell into tears. Such a thing was not to befall this boy. This video was of the same quality as the last one. However, the background was much brighter. They seemed to be in an abandoned household that was falling apart and in ruin. The, the woman fluted over to the boy much like she did in the last video and kissed him gently on the cheek. Kind of a fucked up thing to think about. She slowly brought some heat lamps, the source of the brightness I mentioned before, over to the boy one by one until the entire video was white. After a while, the camera dimmed so that the boy could be seen again. The innocent look <coughs> the innocent look once seen at the beginning of the video turned into excruciating pain. The heat lamp slowly began burning his clothes, skin, and bubbles and blisters started to rapidly be forming on his skin. <laughs> As he too screamed in pain. As the man with the last video, he, he screamed, why? Why? <laughs> and uh, was punished each time by being brutally lashed with a belt with studded pieces on it, what appeared to be broken glass. The blisters began to boil as the child was roasted alive. Eventually, the screaming stopped, and the boy fell into seizures. At this point, the same giggling in the last video could be heard. Again, this time louder. She then took a knife and carved it. Carved, I deserve this, into the child's melting torso as he screamed. Eventually, the boy stopped moaning. I, I closed out the video at that point. I needed to see the next one. I had witnessed this, and this had to be stopped. With such determination, I clicked on 2.avi. This time, there was no one strapped in a chair, but instead a infant car seat was in a chair and what seemed to be a newborn infant tightly strapped inside. Like the previous videos, a woman floated over to the child and she rubbed its head and briefly went off camera. She came back with a syringe and violently struck it into the baby's ch childlike body, ejecting a blue liquid into a child unique to this collection. 
the video began to fast forward. At first, the infant seemed to be normal, happy, smiling, and carefree. As the fast forwarding progressed, the child grew more and more uncomfortable. It started coughing and wheezing. It began puking a white liquid and began crying, almost as if it was trying to say why. A dark bottle was briefly placed in front of the camera. It was with the words tasty juice written upon it. <clears throat> the bottle was turned over to reveal that it contains a blue liquid that sizzled when it reached the ground. Blood-curdling screams erupted from the baby as it fell into an unstable condition. The shrieking child grew closer and closer to death. <laughs> the same giggling could be heard in the previous video that fucking bitch presented herself. But this time, it was far more louder than the others. Determined to make it to the end, I fixated my eyes upon the screen, despite how much they were tugging me to go away. The woman's screaming laughter, then the baby's was at this point. She floated over to the child again and unstrapped it and grabbed it by the legs and, to my utter shock, swung its head as hard as she could into the wall. The child's head exploded upon impact, leaving a cranial viscera of fluids that was draped all over the walls. The video went black. Shaking, I forced myself to click on Y.AVI. Before the video played, I noticed this file was modified within the last hour. Almost blinded by fear, I swallowed my apprehension and opened my eyes. This time, it was just a woman. No other person was present. She was facing away from the camera and was speaking in a demonic tone. I couldn't remember exactly what she said, but here's, here's what she paraphrased. Hello, clearly by now you know I'm not the person I thought I was. I'm sick and I'm a twisted woman. I love it. <laughs> I love this. It makes me happy to see someone die, especially by my hand, and I know you're watching this. And I know you're terrified. The ghost of those who I've killed has been swarming around you even to this minute. Telling you to pull away from the screen to save yourself. Yet, you sit here and watch anyway, waiting for some happy ending or reasonable explanation of the events that you have just witnessed. There is no special effects here. What you saw was real. I love watching this footage, even so as a pleasure myself to it. But I had to hide it, you see. You couldn't know. You're such a lonely piece of shit, Brian. No one would tell you. You turned them on. You were so desperate for love. You fell in love with a serial killer. <laughs> you idiot. This could only end up bad for you since the beginning. The woman turned around, and I instantly recognized my wife's face. I couldn't even feel emotion at this point. I don't know what to think. My memory had fallen into pieces. I don't know where I was or who I had been or what I was about to go through. Everything in my life died as I saw the once happy, bubbly eyes that I once saw my wife become vapid and emotionless. A smile crept across her face, though one that makes me quiver in malice upon the slightest thought of it. This wasn't possession. This wasn't mental illness. This was just evil. So very evil. The video continued. Quite a shame. I really loved you. I thought we had passion. <laughs> Remember my little giggle? It made you fall in love with me, didn't it? I tricked you. <laughs> I lied to you. And you want to know what the best part is? I knew you would find out. I couldn't keep it a secret forever. Eventually, we'd have to find a key to the basement. Eventually, the stench would become too strong. Eventually, the decaying foundation I would begin would began to topple the house, and eventually, you'd finally realize that my children never had leukemia, and my husband never left me. I killed them, and they're closer than you think. Why do you think the basement smells so bad? <laughs> you surprised how easy it is to cement human remains into the floor? You stepped on my dead children and husband. 
feel proud? <laughs> you feel proud of yourself? I... <laughs> I know you're watching this. I just made this video. I know what you've done. I began to shake my hand, fearing what I knew I was about to hear. A cold sweat crept upon me as I suddenly, fe suddenly felt the two eyes born to my back of my head. I was paralyzed. The noises you're hearing aren't pipes. Turn around. I, I slowly turned and I froze as I met the psychotic eyes of my wife. She began to giggle. <laughs> I, I don't know what happened after that. I've been told by the police people heard the screams coming from my house during the attempted murder and called the police. I was told by physicians I was violated with a sharp, <laughs> sharp end of the screwdriver that she placed a hot block of ice in my lap. I was tied to a chair, the same one as used in the previous videos and the videotapes. All the videos are now in police custody. I refuse, I refuse to see mine. My wife was given the death penalty. I was present at the execution. Our last hours were. <laughs> I was present at the execution. Her last words were to tell me that she never would leave me. That she would always know where I was, that she would never give up on my murder, and that she had a job left unfinished. She was sure to tell me that I would see her again, that... <laughs> that she had another minion to finish a job. She finished by telling me I would never be safe. Ever. She had survived the first three attempts at lethal injection, but died at the fourth. She was smiling, and she giggled like a little schoolgirl before she died. Green eyes. I've been through extensive therapy, and years later I've been able to overcome the horrific trauma I saw that and the experience. I still make six figures a year, and I've made a, some good network of friends, and my life has been incredible. I feel accomplished and successful, something I never felt before. And I am now confident, so confident in fact that I'm going on a date tonight with a girl. She's cute too, with long, dark, flowing hair and vibrant green eyes.